Hey everyone, welcome to the latest video guide on how to install RetroArch on Xbox Retail Mode. I'd like to begin this video with a few disclaimers. Firstly, this is not for dev mode, this will not work in dev mode, and you do not need to have dev mode to use these apps. Secondly, I'm not a developer, however I do debug, test, and find fixes for RetroArch on Xbox. And finally, I've seen your concerns about submitting your emails for the whitelist. Rest assured, I have absolutely zero interest in using your emails for anything other than the purposes of the whitelists. If you're curious why I need emails for the whitelist, well, Microsoft's Partner Center requires emails in order to function. On screen is proof of this. Section 1. Answering the basics. How do I get whitelisted? Click on the whitelist link in the description below, or go to gamer13.github.io and click on the whitelist button in the top right. Why do you need our Xbox sign-in emails? That's sketchy. I agree. You're right. But sadly, this is how Microsoft Partner Center works. I have no choice here. Rest assured, though, your emails are kept secure and they're only used for the purposes of the whitelist. That's my promise. However, I always recommend protecting your privacy online. So I strongly recommend using an alternative account for the whitelist. Be smart. Be safe. Is there a risk of me getting banned? It's hard to say no with 100% certainty, because Microsoft could change at any minute. However, in the year or longer that we've been doing it, nobody has. I even have my own personal Xbox account on the whitelist, and I've had no problems. So it's safe to say you most likely will not get banned. How do I know if I'm whitelisted? Check the Discord link in the description below. If you click on the Gamer13's announcement channel, you'll see the next whitelist ping. Usually it says at whitelists, more whitelists. Pretty simple. Section 2. Downloading the apps. This section is for people who have already applied to the whitelist and have been accepted. Only then will you be able to continue this guide. With that out of the way, on your Xbox, go to the Microsoft Edge app, then go to gamer13.github.io, and this is where you can download all of the available apps for retail mode. Next, click on download app for any apps you want to download. For the sake of this guide, you'll need RetroArch and Durango FTP. Note, if you end up at a blank store page, this means you're not whitelisted yet. If you applied before the announcement, and it still doesn't work, please click the refresh button on Microsoft Edge or contact me personally on the Discord. Section 3. Setting up RetroArch After installing RetroArch, open up the app. Next. Go down to the online updater and update everything, especially the core info files, as they're the most important ones to update. Next, you'll want to go back, go to Settings, Input, Hotkeys, and Menu Toggle Controller Combo, and set the desired quick menu toggle. When you're done, go all the way back again, go to Main Menu, Configuration File, and save current configuration. Next, quit RetroArch. Section 4. How to copy files to your Xbox. Install and open Durango FTP. Next, on your Windows PC, open a File Explorer window. Go to this PC and right-click on a blank area. Click Add a Network Location and type in FTP colon slash slash followed by the IP address given to you in Durango FTP. This is usually a 192.168 address or a 10.0.0 address. Once connected to your Xbox, click Local Folder and then the RetroArch folder inside. From there, click Local State. You are now inside of RetroArch's Local State folder. This is important, especially if you need support later on. You'll need to know what this folder is and where to get to it. Next, we need to copy BIOS files to RetroArch. So copy your BIOS files into the system folder. For PCSX2, however, you'll need to create a PCSX2 folder. And inside of that folder, you'll need to create a BIOS folder, all in lowercase. Place your PS2 BIOS files in there. Note that PCSX2 on Xbox is extremely picky on what BIOS files you use. If RetroArch crashes, when you try and load a PS2 game, please add more PS2 BIOS files to this folder. For Dolphin, you'll need to add the sys folder to RetroArch's local state folder, system, dolphin-emu. 
If you plan on storing ROMs internally on your Xbox, you'll need to create a games folder inside the RetroArch local state folder. Note that Xbox One only has 16 gigabytes of available space to store ROMs. The series consoles have 30 gigabytes. Section 5. Creating Playlists in RetroArch In RetroArch, go to Import Content and Manual Scan. As of the making of this video, Scan Directory and Scan File are broken. In Manual Scan, set the Content Directory to wherever your ROMs are stored. Mine are on USB, so I select the D drive, followed by the PS2 folder, because I'll be scanning PS2 ROMs. Next, set the system name to wherever you want. I'm doing Sony PlayStation 2, but you can set a custom one if you want. From there, set the default core, in this case, PCSX2. For file extensions, I'm going to use three different file types, separated with a space, CHD, ISO, and BIN. These are the most common PS2 ROM formats. These need to be specified so that RetroArch can detect your ROMs. Now you can click Start Scan, and a playlist will be created. Repeat this process for NES, GBA, Genesis, or more. You've now completed the video guide. Please make sure you check the Retail Start Here channel in the Discord server in the description for the most up-to-date information and support. If you need any help, please go to the Discord server in the description. I will not be providing any support in the comment section here.